Hey guys, so everyone who starts with home automation will probably start with Sonos. Why? Simple, because those little smart relays, as they call it, are like the fairy dust of home automation. They are everywhere, they can be used to control everything, and they are easy to use. So yeah, pretty much for every beginner, Sonos is like a solid standing, uh, starting point. However, there's one caveat is that uh, Sonoffs shouldn't be wired like this or this and definitely not like this. Why? Because it means wattage is dangerous, it can set your house on fire, it can kill you, so safety first, right? Okay, let me show you how to do it without making professional electricians cry. Okay, so this is how a son of basic looks like after removing its cover. So you can see here's the top part, bottom part, two small covers, a few screws and the unit itself containing everything you need. Um, wiring is pretty simple. It has terminals on both ends, one for the neutral wire, one for the live wire. Also, it is marked on the cover, so you can't really miss it. Also, because it's alternating current, um, you, can re you can't really uh, wire it wrong, or you have to really try. Anyway, point is that if you check the PCB, you can see that the neutral line is just a pass-through, so nothing really fancy there. Um, regarding the live line, the logic and the relay itself is just connecting or disconnecting these two ends of the live line. Again, this should be familiar. I mean, uh, this is not a new product. There's a lot of tutorials out there about um, how to flash it with a custom firmware and so on. So I assume that you have seen this. So regarding how to wire this properly, you might remember that normally there's a third wire in an electrical cable, which is the protective ground. And the creators of Sonoff didn't really care about that. I mean, this device is nice and all, but doesn't really provide means for the protective ground, for connecting the protective ground. And uh, the enclosure is pretty tight, so you don't really have place to run a proper cable. Just if you put it together, you can see that this is the space you have to play with. And if you take a look on the cable, then normally you will have a thick cable like this with three wires and it won't really fit. Why you need the cable of uh, this thickness? Simply because it has been proven and it has been documented also that these devices can indeed handle 10 amps. But uh, most people use cables which can't. So if you don't want to burn your stuff then use a proper cable rated for 10 amp. And, uh, the cable rate for 10 amp will be just too thick for this enclosure. You can try using larger screws and probably end up with something like this. But uh, to be honest, doesn't really look that good. Doesn't really look that stable. So what can we do? Well, 3D printing for the rescue. Uh, I've uh, been checking for something else on Thingiverse when I bumped into this that actually there are a lot of custom enclosures for some of basics uh, here's one that I have printed just to try I really like the design because uh, it uses the top part of the original enclosure so let me show you how does it look like so you drop those and put the unit there original enclosure top there then two covers 
on each side, I mean uh, one cover for each side, gives you an enclosure which is a bit larger but uh, as you can see here gives you more space um, for the cable and also because uh, actually it's four screws on each side it's more secure and uh, it will hold your cables much much tighter than the original one okay so finally how do we root um, the protective ground through all this so if you check this thing just by looking into it you can see that there's plenty of space to cut your cable in a way that uh, you just let the protective ground pass through and root it somewhere like here unless you overload your son off it won't heat up so the cable won't get melt, melt, won't melt or something like that. It's pretty safe to run it here. And now with this enclosure, you you have the space to also secure it on both sides. So I would suggest this that this, if you have access to a three uh, D printer, then get rid of these and have these printed. I will put the link uh, for this into the description of this video. One thing worth mentioning though is that um, in my case the son of PCB is like half a millimeter larger and I couldn't really figure this out whether it is uh, due to the fact that I'm using a standard nozzle on my Ender 3 and it's just not precise enough or actually the PCB is half a millimeter larger than it should be because besides this everyone else, everything else just fits perfectly I mean this is a perfect fit obviously these are fit perfectly so I have to figure this out I have some 0.2 nozzles on their way to me so I will reprint this with uh, hopefully in a more precise way with a smaller nozzle and we will see worst case scenario is that I will just use my Dremel and cut half a millimeter from this PCB because why not I can do it there's a lot of space here a lot of unused PCB space that I can just cut okay so that's my idea about um, safely wiring a son of basic it also worth mentioning that uh, I'm pretty sure that by doing this you are uh, avoiding your warranty so mind that before doing this but I will do it anyway these are cheap and not like I will send them back to China if any of those fry or, or stops functioning or stuff like that Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.